I think it's a very, very uh, positive message that's coming out of the G7 summit. Um, I think a lot of people were concerned that some big countries would be more concerned about their own commercial interests rather than looking at the bigger picture. Um, but what we've seen from the communique from the G7 is there is a welcome degree of unity uh, in their resolve to deal with Putin and not to let Putin get away with this. Um, so I think, I think that's a very positive step. And I think it sends a very clear message to Russia that, you know, if, if Putin thought he could exploit divisions within the West uh, over his invasion of Ukraine, uh, he's been very disappointed. Do you, do you think it's, it's as simple now for Putin as, well, just because Ukraine is, is not a NATO member or we'll have to, obviously have to wait and see what happens with, with, with Finland and Sweden, etc., that that would be enough not to drag NATO into it? Do you think there's a chance that going forward NATO might get involved even if it's a non-NATO member? Well, NATO is involved because NATO countries, including Britain, are supplying weapons to Ukraine to help Ukraine defend its sovereign integrity. Um, and I think that's a very important thing. And I think we need to do a lot more uh, to support the Ukrainians. But this is a, the Ukrainians are fighting this war, not NATO. NATO's real concern is to protect NATO member states. And for the moment, as you said, Ukraine is not a NATO member state. It might be one day, but for the moment, it doesn't have that status. The, the real priority now, and, and this is what General Sir Patrick Sanders is, is, is talking about in his speech today, is that we in NATO and, the, and leading countries in NATO like Britain need to get their act together. We need to increase our defensive strength. Uh, we need to increase our ability to deploy troops and, and fight wars, which, frankly, we've, we, we, during the last decade, uh, successive Tory governments have depleted the resources of our well, this forces is it. so that at the moment we would struggle, we would struggle to deal with uh, the Russian threat. Well, this is one thing that I find a little bit unforgivable, really, which is that Putin has been given, I would say, a, a lot of very strong indications, anyway, that we didn't really mind, necessarily, if he rolled the tanks in. There's been several instances in recent times where we've not particularly bothered and we've not continued, not just ourselves, but our European friends as well, of course, have not particularly been too bothered about, about you know, topping up their armed forces. And so, it, in a way, it's, obviously, ultimately, this is Putin's fault, but in a way, is it ours as well? Well, I've been writing about this in The Telegraph for a decade or more, and I think, yes, we have taken our eye off the ball. Um, and it started with the Cameron government, which almost eviscerated our armed forces. And the, 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 big, the big issue in Whitehall is that after Iraq and Afghanistan, um, the, polit the political classes did not want our armed forces to be strong enough to deploy and fight wars abroad. So the army has been cut and we've relied on special forces and drones and all the rest of it. But as General Sir Patrick Sanders says in his speech today, you can't cross a river with a cyber attack. You know, to get across a river on a battlefield, you need heavy formations, you need artillery protection, you need heavy armour. And we've given up on this, and we, we've really got to get back in this game very quickly because the Russians are there and the Russians know all about our weaknesses.